Good morning, everybody, and thank you for coming. For, you, for those who don't know me, I'm Paul Vivian's okay. son. Vivian Catherine Laubach de Bates Rowe was part of a generation we all wished we were from. She was the middle daughter of six children growing up during the Depression in Minnesota with a German heritage upbringing. She learned English as a second language. The family moved to Downey, California, where she went to high school, worked in the family bakery business. She then traveled to Ogden, Utah for nurses training, then returned to Downey to meet her future husband, Francis de Bates. Moving to Edwards Air Force Base, they began their life together and started a family, eventually settling in Lancaster, California. They welcomed six children into the world, Paul, Mary, Mark, Claire, Regina, and Sharon. She was a full-time homemaker and mom. Years after her father's death, she told me that she had never pumped gas, nor wrote a check, let alone balance the checkbook. Dad looked after those things so she could be the best mom and wife ever. A faithful Catholic life was the bedrock of her existence and love of God and family. When we were in grade school, Mom prepared nutritious and delicious bag lunches for our school days, often a peanut butter sandwich with honey or whole wheat on whole wheat bread wrapped in wax paper with an apple or a lemon. It was difficult to trade anything in my lunch bag to a friend for their student daughter who was twinkling. Mom was a never-ending fountain of love to all of us children and encouraged and supported whatever we chose to do. Now don't get me wrong, I do remember her having a little branch from our plum tree that would warmly remind us to behave when we got out of line. <laughs> Losing her first husband was unexpected and a challenge for her. Mom moved to Oceanside and began her new life to be close to her children and grandchildren. She became an active parishioner here at Mission San Luis Rey. There, she met her second husband, John McGurvey, at a widow and widower social. They shared a happy life for 15 years together until his death. Married life was in her DNA. Because after a few years alone, she met her new husband, Al Rowe, at the same widow and widower social event. They shared their faith and happiness together for nearly eight years until her death. Mom was not much into technology. I remember when she was on the phone with the doctor's office inquiring about her next office visit. The medical assistant instructed her to go online to the doctor's portal and log in and all the information would be there. Stop, mother said. <laughs> I am not online and I don't have email. <laughs> but I do have an outdoor clothesline and it's retractable. <laughs> Such was mom's wit and humor to the very end. Thank you. And now Ed will come and eulogize his father. On behalf of my mother, Patricia Lubbock, and all my family, and my Aunt Vivian's family, thank you all for coming here. Uh, Vivian and my father, Galvin, are both looking down on us today in appreciation. Galvin Halepin Lubbock was born in 1931 in Spring Hill, Minnesota, during the Great Depression. He was the fourth of six children, and his parents lost everything during the Depression. He was a, um, so they moved around a lot. 
This gave him the skills to adapt to different places and situations. Those times were not easy for my father, but I think during those hard times, he developed his foundation for hard work, strong ethics, and morals. I never heard him once complain. Looking for a better life, his parents moved the family to California in his early teenage years. Even as a young teenager, he worked hard. While going to school, he maintained two jobs, a paper route and he worked in the family's bakery business. He joined the Navy less than three weeks after he turned 17 years old. It was there where he learned the basics of electrical engineering. In the Navy, he spent most of the time on the aircraft area at USS Midway. As my father always told me, he had enough cruises to last him a lifetime. <laughs> After spending four years in the Navy, he moved back to California to do his education at Loyola University, where he obtained a degree in electrical engineering. While still in college, he met my mother, Patricia O'Brien, as she was a classmate of his sister, Marilyn. On one of their first dates, they went to get donuts at Dolan Donuts. Donuts became an ongoing theme for their anniversary. So, look for your special donut holes at the reception. <laughs> Who knew that a donut date would turn out to be a 66 year long love affair? In 1957, they had their first child, my sister Casey. After that, I think they wanted one more girl. But as some of you know, that didn't happen. They had eight straight boys. <laughs> So growing up in a family of 11 could be quite fun. Never a dull moment. As you can imagine, it's difficult, uh, difficult traveling around in one car. So what did my dad do? He bought a 1958 Chevy bus, an old school bus, a yellow bus. So he uh, painted it. It uh, was like silver and bluish green. Uh, and being the engineer he was, he took out all the seats. He uh, he put in five bunk beds. He, uh, there was a, a long seat couch that moved into a double bed. Uh, there was a table he dropped down into a playpen. And that wasn't enough. There was a kitchen, there was a bathroom, and there wasn't enough room, so he cut a small hole in the, in, in the roof, and he built a platform with railings around, and, and we got to sleep out there and watch the stars. And, even though it's uh, the drive-in movies. It was really, really cool. For work, my father worked as an electrical engineer at Hughes Aircraft Company. After 10 years or so, he became the founder and owner of Bobock Electric, where he served as an electrical contract for over 30 years. He lived a faithful Catholic life, and family was the foundation of everything he did. He had 15 grandchildren and three great-grandchildren. As a grandpa, he was actively attended many of their sports. Baseball was his favorite. He was an avid Angels fan. He will be remembered for his sense of humor, his fixed skills, his creative style, his love for baseball, and his fantastic head of hair. <laughs> Something I obviously did not know. <laughs> he was a helper to homework, as he could fill a large chalkboard in our family room with a single math problem. It was all already solved in his head. He wanted to make sure we knew how to get to that, that result. He was very artistic with a keen eye of design. He was always building projects, either for the house or Blaubach Electric Company. Later in life, he developed vascular dementia. Seven years ago, he was honored as a recipient for Patient of the Year at the Alzheimer's Society of Orange County. There's a heartwarming video on display at the reception. I always looked up to my father and will always admire him as a dedicated husband and family man with a strong Catholic faith. He will be forever in my heart. I love you, Dad.